I'm sick of hiding. I don't have anything to hide from. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're discussing the Netflix docuseries, American Nightmare, exploring what it says about law enforcement, the media, and where the line between true crime and entertainment becomes problematic. Isn't it true that truth is often stranger than fiction? This is only strange because the law enforcement made it strange. The boyfriend, the girlfriend, the ex, and the home invasion. Aaron Quinn and Denise Huskins met in 2014 while working as physical therapists in Vallejo, California. We ended up talking a lot at, um, at social gatherings and quickly um, there's just an instant connection. Huskins was conflicted about her feelings for Quinn, who had recently broken off an engagement with Andrea Roberts. Quinn claims that his ex fiance cheated on him, effectively ending their relationship. To make matters even more complicated, Roberts worked with Quinn and Huskins. Nevertheless, Huskins and Quinn were drawn to each other. Although Roberts tried to distance herself from him, Quinn struggled to move on from his ex. But they were still living in the same house in different rooms, so that was like he was falling in love with you, but he still wasn't done with that. Huskins considered ending things with Quinn in February 2015, discovering that he had messaged Roberts about potentially giving their relationship another chance. On March 22, 2015, Huskins went to Quinn's house to discuss the future of their relationship. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I wanted to hear him out. Huskins spent the night at Quinn's on March 23rd when their lives forever changed. At least one other person was in the house, but the couple could only make out a bright light shining in their eyes. I see three laser dots crossing us. There's a taser goes off. Then the man says, Aaron, lie face down. Armed with a fake gun, the intruder had the two restrained and blindfolded with goggles covered in duct tape. The intruder also gave them headphones with pre-recorded messages explaining that this was a kidnapping. The voice tells me that he's gonna take my blood pressure. I feel him wrap the cuff around my arm. I feel that squeeze. Both would be given sedatives, with Huskins being taken in the trunk of the intruder's car. Quinn was left behind to pay the ransom of $17,000 within 48 hours. Although Quinn was instructed not to call the police, he eventually decided that this was better left in the hands of professionals. I thought there would be a manhunt. They're gonna do everything they can to track these guys. The Vallejo PD was anything but professional. Finding the story far-fetched, Detective Matthew Mustard concocted a narrative in which Quinn murdered Huskins. So now I get out my puzzle pieces and I start figuring out, okay, how do I make it so you look like a monster? The police did send a search party of more than 100 to Mare Island, but they remained fixated on Quinn while ignoring potential leads. The authorities spent 18 hours attempting to force a false confession out of Quinn until he was let go. All the while, Huskins endured an even more traumatic experience. Completely detached from myself, just watching this all happen, and I just, just my heart breaks for that woman. The intruder held Huskins captive for two days, during which time he indecently assaulted her twice on videotape. While the ransom never arrived, Huskins was released roughly 400 miles from Vallejo and Huntington Beach where her family lived. Although her father wasn't home, Huskins was taken in by a neighbor. True crime or crime fiction? Huskins corroborated that she was kidnapped, and a medical test backed up her accusations of assault. While Quinn didn't murder Huskins, the authorities cooked up another narrative. Did you make any noise? Uh, no, I was woken from a dead sleep. And I realize they are, they are looking at her like she's a piece of trash. Like she's criminal. They found it suspicious that Huskins disappeared only to turn up alive after 48 hours. Rather than follow up on Huskins' claims, the police, as well as the FBI, were quick to label this as a, quote, orchestrated event. Ms. Huskins has plundered valuable resources away from our community while instilling fear amongst our community members. So if anything, it is Ms. Huskins that owes this community an apology. Doug Rappaport, Huskins' lawyer, recalls speaking with FBI agent David Sesma, who compared the case to Gone Girl. In that film, based on Gillian Flynn's novel, Amy Dunn fakes her death with the intent of framing her husband. Deciding to give the marriage another shot, she returns home and emerges a media darling. It's a gripping work of fiction, but the word fiction should be emphasized. Do they really think all of this is an act, this whole thing? 
And why? What do I have to gain? Huskins and Quinn's ordeals mirror Gone Girl in one way. Amy's husband, Nick Dunn, is initially vilified in the press despite being innocent of murder. The media also failed Quinn and especially Huskins, making her out to be a real-life Gone Girl. We're thinking that we're covering the story, the salacious story of a lifetime, and it all went horribly wrong. Journalist Nancy Grace ironically went from being parodied in Gone Girl to commentating on Huskins' story. As most outlets ran with the Gone Girl angle, the San Francisco Chronicle received a series of emails from the kidnapper, which seemed to back up Huskins' claims. Although the authorities continued to push the hoax theory, their narrative started to unravel in June when Matthew Muller, a former Marine and disbarred lawyer who graduated from Harvard, was arrested for a home invasion robbery. I could feel that there was much more to it. Sergeant Misty Caruso, who brought Muller in, noticed parallels between this home invasion and Huskins' kidnapping. Searching his South Lake Tahoe cabin, Caruso found, among other things, a fake gun, goggles with duct tape, and blonde hair resembling Huskins. Are they alive? Are they dead? We have to find out who this hair belonged to. Caruso eventually got in touch with the FBI, who were compelled to revisit the case after seeing the new evidence. The FBI also uncovered videotapes of Mueller with Huskins, who identified him as her assailant. The cadence of how he spoke, the rhythm, I know it's him. Huskins testified against Mueller in 2017, saying that she still has, quote, nightmares every night. Pleading guilty, Mueller was sentenced to 40 years in prison, with another 31 years being added in 2022. Quinn and Huskins also pursued legal action against the city, settling out of court for $2.5 million in 2018. Why didn't you listen to us? Why didn't you take what we said seriously? Is the nightmare over? Although Mueller was brought to justice, the case isn't without several loose ends. Among the lingering questions is why Mueller broke into Quinn's house and kidnapped Huskins. And I feel him sit down next to me, and he says, this wasn't meant for you. This was meant for Aaron's ex. One might assume that it was a random home invasion, but Mueller has claimed that Huskins wasn't his intended target. That distinction goes to Andrea Roberts, but Mueller didn't elaborate beyond that. I am aware of those reports, just going through the discovery materials in my case. Um, I can't speak to personal knowledge. Uh, you know, I'm aware of the allegations. I don't, I don't have any information about that, really. Roberts has maintained a low profile, opting to not participate in American Nightmare. Making her potential connection even more curious, Roberts used to date Agent David Sesma. While no other arrests were made, Huskins and Quinn have speculated that Mueller might have had accomplices. Whether or not Mueller acted alone, it's been argued that several authority figures got off with no repercussions. So what, what's next stage here? Give me a minute. Let me think about what's next. Matthew Mustard continued to rise through the ranks at Vallejo PD, being promoted to the head of the department's investigations division and the evidence and property unit. He was even named Officer of the Year in 2016. His mishandling of Huskins and Quinn's case isn't the only blemish on Mustard's career, being accused of racism and withholding evidence. The American Nightmare crew attempted to interview Mustard and David Sesma, but they declined. You're going to lose the respect of your family. You're going to destroy them because they're going to defend you and everything that they've worked hard for will get flushed down the toilet. Bernadette Higgins, one of the docuseries co-directors, says that she doesn't think David Sesma or Andrea Roberts were directly involved in what Mueller did to Huskins and Quinn. However, Higgins added, quote, there should be a bar when it comes to integrity, and that clearly was not reached on many, many occasions during this investigation. It becomes patently obvious that law enforcement did very little work into the actual crime of kidnapping. What they did focus their intention on was prosecuting Denise and Aaron. While we wouldn't say that the story has been wrapped up in a tidy bow, Huskins and Quinn would get the happiest ending possible given what they've endured. We moved to the coast and started a new life. The two were married on September 29, 2018, about six months after reaching their settlement. They became parents two years later with the arrival of their daughter, Olivia. Between Olivia's birth and the delivery of their second daughter, Naomi, Huskins and Quinn collaborated with journalist Nicole Wisensee Egan on the book, Victim F, from crime victims to suspects to survivors. 
With American Nightmare releasing in 2014, the couple is focusing on recovery and moving forward with their new family. In many respects, the true story of American Nightmare isn't quite like anything we've seen. In others, Quinn and Huskins aren't alone. If Misty didn't connect Moeller to us, I have no idea where, where we'd be. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. For every Misty Caruso who follows the evidence, there's a Matthew Mustard who chases the easiest answer. The Innocence Project has found that, quote, 25% of wrongful convictions overturned by DNA evidence involve a false confession. The people that they wrongfully incarcerate, it doesn't just affect them. It affects their entire family and everybody that's connected to them. And it affects society as a whole. The police didn't break Quinn, but numerous others have been pressured into false confessions under similar circumstances. Likewise, Huskins is far from the first assault survivor to be ignored and demonized by the authorities. As detailed in another Netflix documentary, Victim Suspect. I managed to gather more than 160 cases where alleged victims of sexual assault were turned into suspects. Stories like this happen every day, but they rarely dominate the headlines because they aren't as catchy as Real Life Gone Girl. The next time a crime like this is reported, the question shouldn't be, have you seen Gone Girl? But rather, have you seen American Nightmare? The police refused to follow the evidence, and the media all laughed along the way. What did you think of American Nightmare? Let us know in the comments. How could this person who's charged with investigating crime think that this is like a Ben Affleck movie. That's Hollywood, this is real life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.